Hello fellow fish reefers, it's my great privilege to share with you Tina Reef, the next great large-scale biogenic sea cave reef made in Baja, California, off of the little town called San Catin. Here we are loading in El Sazal, or Sazal port as they call it, just north of Ensenada, 140 sea caves at 2,400 pounds each. After 90 miles, here we are meeting the boat off the island. The fog broke, and here we are set up on the anchor, ready to deploy. The conditions here are perfectly ideal to grow kelp. Some last minute planning in the wheelhouse. Getting our stellar commercial dive team ready to go. Here I am giving last minute instructions, and off we go. And here's a memorial reef with my parents, Tina and Larry, interned inside, and it's the first one to go down. It's there to commemorate their support of the project, and they gave me the freedom as a young person to explore the ocean like few other people. There it is, the first one, and a 55 acre lease that will hold thousands of sea caves and support millions of kilos of marine life, providing food and jobs for thousands and thousands of people for hundreds of years. Here's our custom-made support rack with our Ulysses hooks on them that automatically release, and the diver helping nestle the four sea caves into just the right position, leaving about three to four meters, up to 15 feet of sand, in between each row of four sea caves. That way they lock perfectly and there's plenty of room for the flat fish like the halibut to lay down in between them. Now let's take a look at the reef after we have most of it down. Those wires you see are to attach small kelp plants. In some cases it's necessary to attach small kelp plants to get kelp to thrive and grow. I think it'll grow just fine in this location with, without planting kelp. They're laid out in a hub and spoke configuration, sort of like the fingers on your hand. It allows the, the water to move in between them. And the way that they're locked together makes them even more stable in large surf events. And it also allows the lobsters and the crabs and the fish to move in between them freely seeking protection the entire time so it really amplifies the benefit and the channel in between them is also an additional hiding spot for fish so four placed together has a much larger sum total life holding capacity than a single one off on its own this is in 42 feet of water and these sea caves are made out of a proprietary blend of marine concrete that is pH neutralized and it's done so to make it stronger and denser so there's no leaching of any kind and also to allow sensitive animals and plants to settle and grow. There's a couple air pockets still in a couple of these. They're, they've only been on the seafloor for about an hour. bullseye. And the rack goes up to the deck. Fish Reef Project. Twelve years of hard work has gone into this. Oh, and there's our first customer. A spider crab, or centollo as the Spanish call it. Didn't waste any time in colonizing Tina Reef. We had about a five to six foot swell on this day and about 15 knots of wind, but it was nothing that our expert crew couldn't handle. There's an empty rack coming aboard. And after some months on the seafloor, this is what you can expect. This sea cave was placed in southern Baja, and this is seven months of giant kelp growth. There's over a hundred giant kelp plant starts on this one sea cave alone. It's grown all the way to the surface, 
and it supports calico bass, sand bass, sheephead, yellowtail, white sea bass, halibut laying around the edge. We've seen a couple of small abalone settle. And this sea cave has withstood a 20 year storm event, direct hit, and it did not sink or move. So we're very, very confident of the stability of the sea caves. This one's only been down for two months, and as you can see, the sand bass have found it. And the lobsters like it too. Thank you to the people and government of Mexico for embracing the fish reef project and building a strong ocean health future for Mexico. Ayudando prosperar la vida marina.